Yo, what is going on? I know you can't answer that. I think that's how how I'm going to start every video is by saying that. Um, let's get into this. What I want to share today is how vitally important social connection is if you wish to overcome any type of um, interpersonal disorder, whether it be stuttering or premature ejaculation or erectile dysfunction or social anxiety, any type of disorder that comes up when you're in proximity of another human being, interpersonal. And last week I talked about I talked about solitude and how vitally important this is. This may be a bit confusing because you may say, Chase, solitude, social connection are two different things. How can they both be vitally important? That's a good question. And the reason why is because to reap the benefits from social connection to maximize the benefits of social connection and to get the benefits that you need from social connection to overcome these interpersonal disorders you need solitude why do you need solitude because if you listen to the, to the last week's episodes you you will know the last week episode you will know that Inside of solitude, you discover who you are. You discover who you are, where you want to go, and it gives, your time, it gives your brain time to make sense of what's going on in your reality. And then also, in, soli in solitude, you get the path. Your, your, your brain, your body comes up with the path to achieve your goals, to make sense of what's going on, why is there blockages and where I want to go, and it makes clear what the path looks like. But what I want to focus on right now, like get, if you don't know what I'm talking about, listen to the last week episode. What, what I want to focus on right now is solitude allows you to realize who you are. Without solitude, without time away from other minds, that's what solitude means, time away from other minds. So you're just here with yourself. You're not scrolling. You're not watching something. You're not listening to music. You're with your thoughts, and that's it. You could be walking. You could be on your couch you could be in a cafe with noise canceling headphones on but you're just with your thoughts you're not interacting with other minds you're not taking input in from other minds where was it going with that is that that's that's the only way for you to to realize who you are because without that you are you are just taking in input from other people's minds and you're creating um, an image of yourself a false image of of yourself from what you think you should act like from what you think is yeah the best way to act like based upon what you're taking in from YouTube from other people's from other people's opinions and it's not really you're not really connecting to your core to who you actually are to what resonates with your values and expressing yourself from that grounded place and what happens when you don't have that and you go you don't have that time in solitude to discover who you are and you go into a social social in social interaction who are you going to be you're not going to be yourself 
you're going to be most likely a version you think the other people want to see. You're going to be a version that you think would get the most love and will get the most pe most people to like you because you don't spend time to think about who you actually are and how do you want to show up so you're just going to de you're just going to default to being this fake version of yourself that is pleasing and it's this version of ourselves that pleasing version the seeking version the trying to be liked version it's that version that stutters. It's that version that busts quick. It's that version that can't get hard. It's that version that has social anxiety. It's that version that puts people up on a pedestal and has yourself down here. If, if, you're, not wa if you're not watching this, my hand is lower than the people up on a pedestal. And you think that the only way to be okay, the only way to be enough, the only way to be accepted, the only way to be approved of, the only way to be safe is if you get this person's approval. If you make this person like you. If you don't fuck up, if you're perfect, then you're enough. Then it's okay. Then you're safe. When you're in an environment and you're speaking like that, where there's an outcome you have to achieve, you feel like there's an outcome you have to achieve to be okay, to be enough. And that outcome is in the other person's control. It's if the person likes you, if the person, in, if the person enjoys you, if the person accepts you. If the outcome is in the other person's control, you're going to be pleasing them. You're going to be talking up to them. And it's that, 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 that difference in self-worth that you feel in comparison to another person. That power they, the power they have over you that you give them. That's what causes the interpersonal disorders to arise. So that's why solitude is important because it gives you time to be yourself. So when you're in social interaction, you're able to reap the benefits from that social interaction because you're able to be yourself more and more and more with time. And you pull nothing out of a social interaction except for, except for lessons if you're that fake version of yourself. So that's why um, solitude is so important in order to reap the benefits from social interaction. Now let me tell you why it's so important to have social, in, social interaction. And I'll give you also a lot of ideas of what you can do right after this video to have social interaction tomorrow with people that want to see you, even though you've never seen them before. They want to meet you. They want to get to know you. A whole group of people just waiting to get to know you that you can go in tomorrow or the next day or the next day or the next day to reap the, benef the, reap the benefits from this. I'll tell you that at the end of this little rant, but also at the end of this rant, I'm going to go through three to four questions that people have about stuttering. So if you, if you stutter, um, listen, at the end of this rant, I'm going to go through a few of the most common questions people have about stuttering. And just give you answers on that. So let's um, let's talk about social interaction and um, the benefits we reap from that. This is going to sound like it's going against what I'm 
what I just said, okay? But I will say it first and then make sense of it next. So the, the main benefit that I have found through working with hundreds of people who stutter and myself that allowed me to overcome it is inside of that social interaction, inside of that group, inside of that community, inside of that tribe. I, not always, but eventually, based depending upon who's who I'm who I'm talking to, I will gain a sense of belonging. I will get accepted into that group. I will be accepted by that person. I will be accepted by that group of people or by that community. They will see my value and I will see their value and they will love me. Now, this may seem like it's going against what I just said of that fake version you be you become to try to get the person's validation when you don't know who you are and you go into that role where you stutter a lot it's when you're seeking seeking that validation you're seeking that approval you're seeking to be enough you're seeking for them to tell you you're good you're you're okay you're enough So it may sound the same that isn't that what we're after? Like, why would I try to lie to myself and say, I'm not seeking acceptance when you're telling me that that's the main benefit you get from social interaction, from being a part of a community? Well, I'm not here to tell you that it's wrong to desire to need acceptance. Now, I'm not able to look inside of my body and see my genes and see my DNA code and see how I am wired or not wired to be accepted by by other people but if i were to guess out of all the knowledge that i have all the books i've read it makes sense that we are social creatures and that growing up not just me growing up but like from the caveman days we needed that sense of belonging we needed to be accepted by our tribe so that we don't get kicked out and eaten by a bear or eaten by a tiger. We need to be a part of that tribe. We need to be accepted, right? So I'm not saying that it's wrong to need that acceptance, to need that sense of belonging, to need that approval from other people. But what I'm saying, and this is very important to to understand, is that the way that you seek it is faulty. By turning into a fake version of yourself and speaking to try to be liked, being that fake version of yourself and speaking to try to get acceptance, to to try to make the other person like you, turning into a fake version of yourself will never ever make you feel truly accepted not only that but it will repulse the people who you would get accepted from when they sense this person's not being real it'll just it'll feel fucking weird you are doing yourself a massive disservice and you're pushing the people away that would that might have accepted you so i'm not saying 
that it's wrong to need acceptance. But what, what I'm saying is the way you're going at it by turning into a false role of yourself is never going to work. It's never going to give you what you're deeply seeking. What you, I would say what you have to do, but I don't want to use that, that strict of words. I would say what I learned to do and this is again so massive this took me years to years to learn is to trust is to trust that if i am able to be myself and express myself eventually i will find my people eventually i will run into my people And I have to trust that because there's times where I talk to somebody and I'm myself and it's just fucking not a good conversation. And it's a weird fucking vibe. And I leave and I'm like, whoa, that was fucking, oh, like not good. Like that didn't make me feel good. That... I, I actually I wouldn't even say I've ever felt like that didn't make me feel good, but I I can definitely feel like we definitely did not vibe at all. And I have to trust that that person just wasn't my person. And I have to continue to trust and trust and trust with the people that I go by in my life that I am not supposed to connect with everybody. I'm not supposed to deeply resonate with everybody. That would be unnatural. That would be me trying to be someone else to try to please everybody. And when you're trying to please, you're not going to deeply connect with anybody. But I have to trust that eventually, me being myself, I will be able to meet my people. And I have. And that's why I can share this with you. Is that not through pleasing not through pretending, not through proving myself, not through being perfect have I met my people. But I met the people I deeply, deeply connect with where I accept where I accept them fully, they accept me fully, in a group of all these people, the sense of belonging that I feel, the sense of belonging they feel, the sense of acceptance of just like, dude, like, Everything about you is just is just completely accepted here. And I, I, I feel that love for them and they feel that love for me. I've met about six or seven people in my life that I feel this way with like deep, deep, deep shit. And what that what that gives me is a core deep inside of I'm enough. I am I am what's that word? I am um, I am lovable. And regardless of what you say of like, you shouldn't seek being enough through the validation of other people. I completely like, I'm all on board with that. And me being alone, like I've, I've spent more time alone than pro than probably 99% of these people on this earth. Like I'm fucking cool with being alone. I love being alone. I love it. But this acceptance and this sense of belonging, it did not come through seeking. It came from being myself. And as a byproduct, that sense of enoughness just got stronger. That sense of 
self-esteem, self-worth got stronger. And what this allows me to do is having this core, having these people, even if it's just one fucking person who accepts me fully, accepts me fucking fully because we're social creatures. Just one person who accepts me fully, who can see all of me and not flinch and want to hear more. One person. Then I know I can go out into this world, be rejected by 99% of people, be cast out as a loser by this whole fucking city. I know that I'm still enough. I know I'm still valuable. I know I'm still safe. I know I'm still worthy. Because the people that I care about the most accept me. And what happens when you don't have this person or these people who are like this foundation to you, who are not just random people that want to see you win, not just random people that cheer that cheer you on, but people that you admire, people that you look up to, people that you respect and that you love, love you back and respect you back. When you have that, or without that, then that social creature of you is a lot more a lot more susceptible to seek that acceptance that core that i believe within us all as a social creature who wants to be in that tribe and wants to be safe and wants to be not kicked out and eat and eaten by that bear or tiger that i believe you're a lot more susceptible to seeking that acceptance that approval everywhere you go everywhere you go and again being that version of yourself is what causes that stuttering you don't stutter or you don't stutter barely at all or yeah i'll get into the other interpersonal disorders too but with stuttering you don't stutter you barely stutter at all when you are just being yourself, when you're not talking up to somebody, but you're able to look at someone in the eyes and not feel an inch of like, I, I feel like I have to prove myself right now, or I have to please you in some way. But when you can just speak and not filter what you're saying, because you know, no matter what you say, is good enough, is great, is perfect, whatever is the most natural thought in your brain, if you can share that, you know that's what's needed. When you're speaking from that place, you don't stutter. During sex, you don't bust quick. When you are acting from an authentic place, when you are, when, when your mindset and your thoughts are within they're connected to your body and you're acting from that primal place of feeling of being embodied in everything you're feeling and you're acting from that feeling and you're leaning in to that desire and you're not thinking is this good enough is she gonna like this should i keep doing this because she's making noise Oh, she stopped making noise. I should change. You're not thinking. You're acting from a place of embodiment and feeling. And you're just going with your, you're going with your desire. You're going with your impulses. And you're not, you're not in your head. And you're just, you don't boss quick then. You have control then. You feel that. 
all the social, um, all the in, all the interpersonal shit. Um, where was it going with that? All that interpersonal shit, it comes up when you are that fake rule. When you're thinking there's something you need to be, something you need to do in order to get that acceptance. I forget where I was going with that, but I'm sure you can rewind this and make sense of what I just said. Um, so that is why social connection is so important. And there's times in, in social connection, even if it's not like your person, but you're out and you just meet somebody and you share a story and you laugh. And there's that feeling of just like, oh shit, you're a human too. Like you see something in them. You see humanity. You see yourself in them. You see hurt in them you see they have a challenging life you see that they're scared as well you see that they don't know what they're doing in their in their life and you resonate with that there's that feeling of i'm not alone and this person you can even feel a sense of of acceptance from that person just by th them just by seeing their Hum by seeing their humanity and accepting them. And this isn't from seeking it. This isn't from trying to please them, trying to prove yourself to them. This isn't by seeing them on a pedestal and saying, I have to act in a certain way so I can get your validation. No, this is through understanding who you are and Pre and presenting that even though that's fucking scary and as a byproduct you gain these incredibly deep connections and now what i want to get into like this is a very huge part of this is where you can find this where you can find your people because you may be saying right now chase i get it it makes sense it makes sense but I've met a lot of people and I've been myself with these people and there's a lot of people and I, there's just something fundamentally different about me or there's just something so odd or different about other people that I'm like, we're just different. And I, I won't be able to find that person or these people that I deeply connect with that I can truly be myself around. That's what I used to think. That's exactly what I used to think. And I have to tell you that you're wrong. And that the reason why you have not met someone that you feel is like your, your person, like, oh, Jesus, like this this is a, a human like me. Like, I... It's hard to describe that feeling you have when you connect with someone so deeply. And you're like, fuck, this is my person. This is my human. Like, oh, it just... It's hard to describe that feeling. But if you have not met that person, there's two reasons why. The first reason why is... You have not met enough people. You have not been yourself authentically around enough people. Because most people are not, you're not going to vibe with to that level. Most people you're not. Or two, you're looking or you're in the wrong places. And you're not in the groups that... Or in the or in the communities or meeting people that you yourself truly or have the highest percentage to resonate with because they mimic your they mimic your values. Like if if you're a spiritual person, 
deeply, deeply spiritual, but you go into the clubs every night. You're like, Chase, I've met so many people and it's just like, I feel like it's something off. I don't really deeply, I don't deeply connect with them. It's like, are you going to the med to the meditation the meditation event that happens every sunday in your city probably not probably not because you're at the club and you won't meet your people there in a high percentage at the club if you highly value what you value unless you value exciting parties so with that being said let's get into how you can find your people and i've written a lot about this um i would say the best way maybe not the best way depending upon how you live but an option that you have is to go on an app called meetup M-E-E-T-U-P, meet up, one word. This is an app that is big in a lot of cities. Most likely if you live in a bigger city, there's going to be lots of meetups where people host events on fucking everything from playing board games to walking in nature to running to book to book clubs to cooking to wine tasting, to philosophy groups, to med, to metal work, to everything. In-person shit. And there's also online stuff that you can find. But I would recommend trying to find it in person because online is just different. Trying to find an in-person event. What you want to do, what I recommend, what I suggest, why, what I invite you to do is to spend time in solitude, get to know what you value, get to know who you are, get to know where you want to go, and get to know what types of people you would want to discover, what types of people you would want in your life, what types of friends you would like to have, what types of communities you think would be interesting or valuable to get into. Then go on Meetup and try to find that. If you're into spirituality, try to find spirituality groups, yoga groups, meditation groups, breathwork groups, all that. It doesn't have to be exactly spirituality, but if you even like going on hikes, I'm sure that's a higher percentage if that's just like the only type of group in your city that's close to spirit that's close to spirituality the closest to it there's a lot higher percentage of meeting your people in that hiking group than at a club than on random street than at a random than at a random cat a little bit la 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 at a random cafe um if you're into philosophy then Look at philosophy groups, and again, you don't need. A, there's not exactly philosophy groups, which there's there there is in in a lot in a lot of the cities I've a lot of the cities I've been in. Then again, you can find a close substitute to it. Even fucking hiking. I, again, there's a lot of walking things. There's a lot of like different types of things, and if there's nothing. Just like board, just like board games or football matches or yeah, tag football or soccer or whatever that they host there, then you can still go to those as well and meet those people there and be and be yourself. Or, and here's a big one, maybe the best idea is to host your own so you can host your own events on meetup this is what me and my friend alex did when we spent six months in our in argentina living 
together, we hosted this event on 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 Meetup for about three months called called Connection Lab. And this is a this is an event that went on for like three hours every Sunday or Saturday, um, where we would meet with random people. Like they would see the event on Meetup and just come to it where we would just get fucking deep and talk about the most vulnerable shit that's going on in our lives. And like groups of four to five people, we do it for 20 minutes, then switch, then switch, then switch. So we talked to everyone there. We opened up to everyone there. We had like, we met eight to 16 different people every single week that are, that value deep connections and this is in argentina english we we can only speak to english people uh english <laughs> english speaking people so that's not as big as being in a city in fucking the states or where or wherever where you speak where you speak the language by the end of this we only did that for like three for like three months we had a solid group of people that we deeply connected with. There was, and I, I met so many people from that group that I fucking love and loved. Like it was such a blessing to have such authentic people just coming into our lives. I work, we're meeting them every week. And I met some of my most favorite people on on this planet there um so you can host what you're interested in on meetup and get people who are also interested in that who also value that to come and meet up it's really really huge and an additional option that you have is to um if you can't find anything on Meetup and for some reason you don't want to host a, a Meetup right now, another another alternative you have to find your people is just to look up on Google what you're in, what you're interested in. Say it's full. Say it's philosophy. You type in full full philosophy groups in. And then you say your city, philosophy groups in Vancouver. And then you type in, and then you type in Reddit, R E D D I T, Reddit, right after f philosophy groups in Vancouver, Reddit. And why Reddit is because Reddit is a really great place where people post shit like this where someone will ask a question like hey is there any is there any is there any philosophy groups that people meet in person and talk about this in vancouver and then you'll see people comment and that's a great way to get to know that as well or you can make your own post on reddit as well now i can tell that i am getting but getting fatigued in the mind right now because I'm stuttering quite a bit more the last five, 10 minutes. It's because I'm really hungry. And um, this is my second recording of this. So I've talked for more than an hour now. Um, but I want to get on to the questions about stuttering. But to wrap this up, what I'm sharing right now is... Um, I challenge you to go to one event this week, either on Meetup or one you find on Reddit, an in-person one where you have the highest percentage chance to meet one of your people, people who share the same values or interests as you, and you go into that group not trying to please people, not trying to seek approval from people. 
Like we all do that to a degree because we're human. But just with the intention in mind that the only way you're going to meet your people is by being yourself. Unapologetically yourself. You take time in solitude to discover who you are. And this is a, this is a process. I'm still going through it. I spent a lot of time in solitude. But it's the only way. And get meeting people. Get meeting people every single week. You can go to multiple different groups. I would recommend you do that. And you will see just by going out and talking to people, you force yourself outside of your comfort zone. You're speaking more. You're expressing more. You're touching people more. You're hugging people. You feel connected. Like I stated the benefits of being accepted by the tribe. It's not even as far as I put it. Like I talked about an extreme of like finding your person. Like I've only found like six or seven of these people in my, in my life. Like I feel a deep, 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 deep connection with. That's still a lot, I think. Um, but even just going to the same group every day to play fucking board games or every week to play board games and you build this type of you build this type of build this type of status inside the group where people are excited to see you where you're excited to see other people where you share stories and people listen to you and you have this sense of belonging and value in the group that is so healing to the heart and you will you will find when you have that acceptance when you have that sense of belonging you go you go out and you order your cup of coffee the next day you're not going to be in this state where you're like please don't mess up or not as much where you're going to please don't mess up my order don't stutter on the word cappuccino don't please make this person don't think i'm weird like those those thoughts are going to be quieted because you have experienced something you have experienced an experience where you get deeper with people where you get past the surface level conversation with people and people get to know you and people accept you and people want to hear more from you and they get past that sur the surface level shit and it, he it heals some thought it heals, it heals some some yeah thought that you're not enough at your core so you can when you fuck up on your order, if you stutter and you cappuccino, if you stutter on cappuccino and you see that person and you see that person judge, you see that person judges you, it's not going to land the same way because you know past that surface level thing that he or she just saw you know you're valuable you know you're worthy and you do not get that in the, that primal in the primal level as we're social creatures if you isolate yourself from social connection from those groups so it's a necessity. And I hope that was helpful to you. And it made sense. So now I want to get into, uh, let's do three or four really common questions people who stutter have. Um, let's get into that. And also, if you have any questions about stuttering, about premature ejaculation, about any interpersonal disorders social anxiety stuff like this that you have that you want to ask me i will go over it in the next in the next episode depending on how how many i get it may be the next next one i'll go over it in the last part of the next episode as i'll do this every episode every episode i will answer questions that you have but since i just started this i don't have any questions from you guys so I'm going to go on chat 
GBT and type in most common questions people who stutter have. Let's see what comes up. One, why, why, why do I stutter? The first question is, why do I stutter? People often wonder about the causes of stuttering and why they, and why they develop the speech disorder. The first question, I, I've, so I've kind of two, two things I, I want to say. One is like why you developed a stutter and Bob down the street didn't beats me. Like, I don't care. I don't know. And I don't care. And I don't think it's something even worth spending a lot of time on for your health for your meant for your it's just a not a good um it's just a waste i believe of energy to try to look at that question like why did i why do i stutter and fucking that guy doesn't like it's valuable to know to researchers and shit like that but if you have a stutter right now the best thing that you can do for yourself is to stop trying to say like why do i have this and just accept all right i'm stuttering what can i do now so what i will say is not why, like what is the root cause of why you stutter? But I will tell you the causes of why you're stuttering right now. Like what is continuing you to stutter and have these bad, bad blocks? And the causes of that I've already mentioned in this video is it's all about the role that you play. When you speak to a dog, when you speak to a pet, when you're in a room by yourself, when you're talking to someone you feel very comfortable with, you don't stutter or you barely stutter at all. But as soon as you talk to someone you deem as valuable, you deem as more valuable, more higher status than you, guess what? You start to get blocked up. You start to stutter. Why? Because you turn into that false role. You turn into a version of yourself that starts to try to avoid stuttering because you're trying to gain this person's approval. You're not trying to gain the approval of your dog. When you're in a room by yourself, the words you say isn't, you're not trying to get, get approval from yourself or from, from fucking cat, from Cas Casper the ghost. When you're talking to someone you're very comf comfortable with, you know you can stutter. And shit wouldn't go and shit wouldn't go array. They they wouldn't cast you out. They wouldn't judge you. You're they're like they're cool with it. It's only when you start to speak to people you deem as higher value, as someone who you're seeking approval from, and you're trying to avoid judgment from because you're giving yourself worth. You're giving them the ability to affect your self-worth because you are seeking this from them. Because you are viewing them above you and viewing yourself be below them. And the internal, di internal dialogue in your subconscious is if I just get accepted by this person if this person thinks i'm cool if this person thinks i'm enough then i'm okay then it's okay so you're speaking up to them and this tension that you feel when your self-worth where your value of a human being is in the grasp of another person's reaction that is extremely unsafe that feels extremely unsafe emotionally 
and you're not able to be yourself. You're stuck and you're stifled and it's hard to breathe and it's hard to, 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 to speak how you want and relax. So there's a bunch I can get into in that. And I've talked about this in, in other videos too. But that false role that you turn into, that inauthentic version of yourself where you speak in a way where you think, this will get me accepted. This will make the person like me. When that's your forefront thought, not what's my truth and what's the most authentic way to speak it and live it, that's when you, when you stutter, when, when you sacrifice your authenticity to try to get liked and approved of. That's when you bust quick and all that stuff too. Two, is stuttering permanent? Is stuttering permanent? So this is actually very interesting because I worked with people who completely stopped stuttering. They were like 19, 20, 22 years old and they completely stopped stuttering. So for some people, it's not. For some people, they, they can just remove this part where a stutter is no longer is no longer a, a, a reaction to, to, to tension in the body. I do believe age plays a role with it. Um, where if you've been stuttering for 70 years, be pre a lot harder to un to unwire that um, to unwire that 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 habit. Doctor doc, Doctor Sheehan, I talked I talked about him before. He kind of splits people into two into two into into two categories. Young kids. I think he says maybe up to like 10 or 12 or 14 or something and everybody and everybody after that age if you continue to stutter past that age he says young kids have the ability to like completely lose that lose that i lose that identity or lose that lose that connection to stuttering but the other option that you have is just to deeply accept it. Just deeply accept, okay, I stutter, and now let's work on it. Or let's not work on this stutter, but work on the self-acceptance, because again, when you're fully accepting of yourself, you basically don't stutter. Like when you're just allowing yourself to truly be, you still have the tendency to stutter, and I still stutter from time to time when tension comes up. But when I'm fully accepting of myself, it's very rare, and I don't care when I do. And stuttering is not an issue then. It's only an issue when I'm trying not to, to stutter, when I'm trying to be this false role. Then it's uncomfortable, then I push, then I resist it, and then it's uncomfortable, and then it gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. But again, I've worked with 19, 20, 21, 22 years old people, and they've completely lost it. And what's interesting, what I thought of is about eight months ago, maybe more than that, I took a break from the coaching of people who stutter. And I went into the woods, and I met and I met this chick, this girl, she's amazing. And we just lived our lives and I never thought I was gonna go help people who stutter again. And we lived, we just like traveled, we went into the woods and shit. And since I, I didn't work with anyone who stuttered and since I wasn't reminded of my stutter 
I didn't stutter for months. Maybe like a little bit from time to time, but I didn't realize, I didn't think about it. And if you would have asked me, did you stutter? I would say no. Like, it's gone. And I only started to stutter again. This tendency came up again when I started to, again, focus on helping people who stutter. So I truly believe I have the ability to not stutter. But I I have to completely remove myself from the stuttering world. So it's a type of sacrifice, I, I guess, that I make to help people who stutter to stay in this to stay in this stuttering world. And I've talked to other people um I've talked to other people who help people who stutter. And they have had common experiences too of like leaving. I, like after all that work they, they do. And like I'll just talk for myself. After all the work I've done on my self-confidence, my self-esteem. When I leave the stuttering realm and I'm not reminded of it by like people, by my thoughts, by um, researching it and by just like thinking about it i i don't think about stuttering i it just like if it happens i brush i brush it off and i brush it off i brush it off to the point where it's like i forget about it but now that i'm reminded of it because i make vi- i make videos i make videos about it i stutter again but it's a it's a sacrifice i'm willing to make because i've learned to be so fucking confident, even though I stutter from from time to time, that um, I, I still have a lot of value to give. So I'm willing to make that sacrifice. So is stuttering permanent? Depends who you are, depends the, the work you do. For some people, no. I, I would say no. But for some people, um, yeah, it is. Three, can stuttering be cured? I just answered that also. You dumb chat GBT. How why you answer why'd you ask the same question twice? Um but cured is a bad word. I don't like the word cured. I went when in the journey in overcoming stuttering, I would never use cured. Because I think of cured as like, if you want to cure your stutter, you're trying to remove the stutter. Versus overcoming stuttering, what I represent, I can I can say I overcame it. And I help people overcome it, even though I still stutter. Because what I view, like what overcoming stuttering as is removing all the reasons and all the ways that you hold back because of the stuttering. So you're acting and you're behaving in a way as if you don't stutter and there's no reason to hold back. You're being yourself. And overcoming stuttering to me is being the same version of yourself on a good day that you feel like you're very that you feel like you're very fluent being that same version versus if you're stuttering a lot, you're talking to the same people, you're not holding back. That is what I view overcoming stuttering as, okay? And four, uh, let's just do one more question. We're almost at an hour here. What can I do to improve my speech fluency? Individuals with stuttering often seek strategies and techniques to help them speak more fluent. Okay, well, I had you asked, as this is a very common question, chat GBT, well done. And it's, in my opinion, definitely a wrong frame to try to work on your stutter, to try to, I, I don't even like the word work on your stutter. It doesn't make sense. You're not working on your stutter. Work, you're working on yourself. But 
what can I do to improve my speech fluency? What I have viewed over the hundreds of people that I've worked with is the people who have the goal of improving fluency or removing the stutter, they never reach that goal. And if they do reach that goal, they're not happy. Because the people that reach that goal of avoiding every stutter and becoming fluent, the only way that I have found to do that, um, well, I have a few different thoughts here. Like, when people are stuttering and they say, I want to be fluent, I want to improve my fluency, they're often going to be they're all often going to be given a speech technique like breathing uh breath every three words and like they're given a speech technique and i've worked with and yeah you're fluent but i've worked with many people who are fluent but they use a speech technique and the reason why they still come to me is because they're not able to be themselves. They're not able to fucking like let this shit go and just be spontaneous and just talk. They, they say, fuck, I would much rather stutter and not care about it than use this speech technique that holds back my authenticity. So um, if your goal is to improve fluency you're going to be seeking short-term things that improve fluency. And, and, and here's a big thing. And first of all, that doesn't work. And a big thing is a main concept in what I use to overcome stuttering, to no longer be held back from it, is to be able to stutter more, is to be able to stutter and not feel shame, and not feel like I'm losing, and not feel like I'm going backwards. But I feel like I'm going forwards, I'm improving, I'm, I'm going further in the journey to overcome my stutter, when I'm able to stutter, and not close off, and stay open, and look at the people, and not feel shame, or feel less shame, or, or feel shame, but not close off. I feel like I won then. And that causes me to win. That improves my confidence. But if my goal was fluency, then I will think I lost. Then I'll go backwards. And depending upon what you think, it's true. If you feel like you lost because you stutter, then you lost. But if you feel like you you gained self-respect and you moved forward because you stuttered and you were able to stay open, or you stuttered and you closed off, but you still spoke your words. If you say, fuck yes, I respect myself because of that, you actually grow. All right. Um, there's a few more things I, I, I would have liked to say, but I have literally 29 seconds left before I have no st storage left on my phone. So with that being said, I hope you enjoyed this week's episode. Remember down below in the description, you can post any question that you have, you can send it to me. I'll go over it in the next week's episode or the next next week's episode. And um, Or if you don't have any question and you just want to share something, that's cool too. You can do that. Anyway, I got to go. 